Jump on, jump on, good people. Jump on, jump on. Um, yes, something just happened. So let's get this. Community member. Community members, jump on in. Let's share that in. We're going to do this live stream and open stream to the world, but uh, bringing on my, my special boys that we were updating this morning and yesterday on a key concern regarding Japanese yen. Um, and that is now dovetailed in what we're seeing in the bond markets. What have those two things got to do with each other? Has, da -da 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 -da, drama queen alerts, has something major just broken? Yes, friends. Has something major just broken that you have yet to hear about? News before the news, right here on the market side of my channel. Let's get that door handle out the way. It looks ugly. Uh, I'm living in a box. I'm living in a cardboard box. Yep, China, the tiny homes. Uh, we are in uh, glamping in the south of France, but we're coming at you about uh, a big thing that might have just happened. Where's the camera? Where's the camera? Looking to my eyes, looking to my eyes, fantasize. Um, yep, the... Uh, the U.S. 10-year, <clears throat> which has been gestating at that critical 3% level, which we expected to have that uh, pushback and pull. By the way, guys, smash the like uh, button. Already 162 of you ramping on. That's right. There's big shit going down. Big shit in little China. Hit the number with the thumb right now because we're on 40 and there's going to be no adverts. Uh, something is happening real time, and I've decided to make this free view. We were discussing in the community a couple of things yesterday, uh, today, and this morning, and now uh, we're going to press a little bit forward, and we're trying to bring um, free views in so that you don't get killed. That's it. So we were discussing the USD JPY yesterday, and I said there is a deep rejection that occurred on all the Euro news. This was a very intense Euro news week. In fact, only on Friday, I think we get a little bit of US news. Uh, there was a bit of GBP news as well, uh, but it was very heavy on the Euro news. Also, you had a bit of chitty chatty out of the BOJ. Um, that sounds like something kind of erotic, but it's far more boring than it might uh, sound. The good old BO of J, that is the Bank of Japan. Um, so there was a little bit of mutterings and fluffings there, should I say. Fluffings fluffings oh yes we like a little bit of fluffings anyway so what happened what happened what happened what happened by the way ww the market sniper hit the link uh in the comments below if you haven't already chatted with our guys it costs nothing and you'll go there what has happened is the yen has gone straight into what we refer to as a type one uh, falling wedge um and uh, something that uh we reiterate with our community and best uh, understanding is that you have three versions of possible outcomes on a yen. But um, when you've had a really big pattern, this was a 10-year, 13-year pattern on the USD JPY. Go to your trading view while you're watching. Look into the chart. See what the man says. All the way from 107, right the way up to A136, a massive structure monthly uh, HVF, squeezy, squeezy, Japanesey. You heard it? Yeah, it's the cat's phrase. Um, and boy, did that Japanesey get squeezied. And then he did spit. He did spit like a spitting cobra whoop, up to the 136. And then we had a little bit of a live trading day. Now it's two Fridays ago because we are a Friday, by the way. Um, and we said there's another little tiny wind up and the scale had come right down. The setup was on an hourly. So what tends to happen is you get macro setups. This is what you'll learn on HVF method and so much more. Is when you get a really macro big setup, you tend to need a big progress decay. Everything is bigger. If it's an elephant, it's got a big pippy. It's not little pippy stories. Um, so when you have an elephant of a setup, progress decay, pullback, target runs are significant. And when you drop right down from a monthly setup and the best you can muster is a little hourly setup that's going to give you a tiny little bit more to scrape the bottom of the peanut jar with your little spoon this is poverty times must eat all the peanut butter including that tiny little rim bit in the corners and that is telling you you're going to going to only going to get so much more so our first guess was pretty accurate and there's only a little bit now that we've got you a little bit of extra juice in the tin um and with that smaller structure much smaller structure that you drop right down from a monthly we got up to 138.0s and we are literally calling the top medium cycle that doesn't mean forever 
That doesn't mean whole dollar dominance and whole uh, aspect is gone now uh, for eternity. But if we pivot into a little bit of fear, fear is what chases people back into bonds generally. Fear is what chases people back into bonds. So if you go to at the market sniper, Twitter, those of you who are not on Twitter, go there now, open a burner account. It doesn't cost you anything. Most of them are bots anyway, and follow at the market sniper. If you go to the two charts that were shared, because this is a stream, you will not be seeing charts today. Uh, I do that with the community and we, did a, uh, we, we do that uh, with media, FaceTime and uh, all the time. Um, but when I stream and I have my special pearl equipment, you're not going to see charts as well. And we are traveling. We are the traveling Wilburys of trading. We will be in the Southern Hemisphere. Oi, the South. Come on on the south. Watch those rugby results turn when I move down south. Anyway, um, so all the good news is going to be uh, coming. Fear is here. Something is possibly breaking, which could be derivatives, European banking. Um, we had a euro heavy week. So pointing the finger at Agent Orange, who is toxic chemical poison by definition, Agent Goddamn Orange, uh, on guard, Mademoiselle on guard, the fraud, um, invariably, um, I would I would finger and point in that direction. Um, yeah. So, uh, what does this mean? If the U.S. tenure is in a reversal structure, and you go to the Twitter and you see what I shared out there, um, you will get to the opinion that hey, we're going to run from the better part of the neckline is two point seven five. I've done a revised draw that's in our community. So the draw you'll see on Twitter is the, the a rough draw. There's a better draw in the community, but basically taking it from me, 2.75 neckline. The high was in and around, in and around three and a half. So that takes you perfectly to a 2%. Remember, targets are usually just run. So that could mean a dip below the 1.9s. Now what's been happening is with a three, three and a half, and the expectation of these stubbornly high interest rates, the yen had to get clobbered because the yen rate is at about 0.24 because you can earn a whole bunch more in America. So the yen got clobbered and priced for 3%, 3.5, with expectations of possibly more, until such time as things break, and now you have a reversal back down to two, now you've overpriced the devaluation of the yen against dollars, and we are having a dollar pause. Also, on our Dixie that we've been sharing, broadening structures on bull poles, absolute signs that the rest, the great pause is coming. So there might be a full-blown scare, or there might be a mini scare that sees us take the... A very tentative return maybe later to tightening after a little bit of uh, XYZ. Yes, Agent Orange was a pupil of Kissinger and Klaus, says RK. He's absolutely right. Nicholas P. I hope the market crashes. So by the way, what does this mean? So I've said a bunch of stuff. A pullback, the rising wedge that we plotted inside our macro HVF. You often squeeze home to a macro target. Then that one inside the three impulse wedge, you got a tiny little HVF that gave you more into the top the third highest point. So we've literally come close to calling the very top of the yen mark mid-cycle. I'm not saying it's all over, but you could now have a period where you have the dollar is not going to be the strongest. It's not going to be the out and out weakest, but it's going to be tiny bit laggard amongst most of the majors. And you might get consistent um, strength coming out of um, the uh, yen pushing back. As it reprices, no longer for three and a half, possibly going higher, but for uh, an environment where the U.S. bonds are now actually two percent instead of the three percent. So this is what happens when you have a, a huge move, uh, the the seven sigma move that was one oh sevens right the way up to what ended up being uh, probably traded one thirty nine a bit. But as I say, our high call at one thirty eight point. Uh, two five is about as close to the top as you can hope to get. Um, thank you, James. Yes, book a call, cost nothing, have a chat. It's not what you make, it's also what you keep. The, the things we're doing on reset and protecting structure and getting people with offshore um, uh, profiles outside of your home base nation where all your flags are, your passport, your bank account, your home address, your tax uh, point of payment, your business, etc. You've got to start diversifying that. Anyway, back to this. If we get the bond market actually going up and the yield down, remember, inverse relationship. If you start to get that and you're no longer pricing 3.5s and 3s and you get the sell-off properly to 2, what does that actually mean? It means more money is flowing into the scared pot, which is dollar, 
So you should get a firming possibly of the dollar, maybe not against the yen. The yen will be the dominant one, but you might get a firming uh, in there. Uh, you're going to see money going into the debt markets, buying that as a debt market. You're going to get peak. Let me just warn you. This is a, a small reversal trade that may come off, but recognize the difference between a trade and a long-term investment holding. You're going to get peak buy, bond, wear diamonds. Absolutely. Buy, bonds, wear diamonds. Buy, bonds, wear diamonds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Invest in the debt system. Invest in the debt system that they're selling you. There's an untold amount of demand. Oh, no, no. There's an untold amount of supply of debt. Uh, and at some point, this whole thing could be written down when they pull the plug on the system, which could be much closer than many of you realize. You might not have as much time as you think. And if you're waiting for a couple more obvious shoes to drop and then you'll start doing something, let me tell you, it takes a while to get a structure. It takes a while to do a lot of things. If you aren't preparing for defense well before defense, you don't oh, oh, wait for the Vikings to be coming over the hill. Then I'll start building a moat and putting up a fence. That's the equivalent of doing nothing right now, guys. It's called inertia. It's called Stockholm syndrome. It's called disbelief. It's not seeing that there's a different world to be experienced that you've never seen in your life potentially coming in these financial times. Um, anyway, so that could put a small uh, bid under the dollar, but maybe not against the yen, for example. So it won't be the weakest, but it may not be the strongest if money's running into the debt system. What it also probably means is there's some freak out fear that you're going to hear about. It's not going to be good for your stocks. Uh, and I'm going to pivot and have a quick look at Bitcoin because I do not assess that this is a risk on type event if bonds start getting a bid. It's typically the fear. Um, but Bitcoin actually so far doesn't seem to be too affected. So there are absolute lags in these markets, guys. So just because Bitcoin is kind of at 23, I'm looking at it now, 473. Um, it's about 20, call it 23 and a half, crept out of what was a flag now, possibly into a broadening structure. These are rallies against a possible trend. You will suddenly see tomorrow at three bells, suddenly, boom, Bitcoin starts selling off. The, the people in crypto don't understand macro. The value of macro is advanced warning. The people in debt markets get scared and move before the equity markets get scared and move. Let's have a look also where the Dow and the NASDAQ is today. Uh, don't say, oh, they're not buying it. That's just a silo all on its own. There's no correct collateral effect. We had for a long time move, M-O-V, uh, which is the volatility measure on debt substantially high and the stock market didn't give a shit. Uh, the VIX was no worries, no worries at all. Massive, probably biggest spread ever. It was just disbelief in equity realm. Boom, then the head and shoulders started triggering. Then the equity started falling and now you're, now you're well off highs. Um, so don't, you've got to recognize your early warnings for early warnings and have the courage to believe in them. The debt markets and currency markets are the God markets. When Thor smashed his hammer down on the anvil table the mice under the table and run for their holes in the in the corner of the room why because god market is getting angry and stamping his feet and it's not a time for mice to be cheeky or bold um and they could get crushed and truly in that sense bitcoin and crypto are the mice and the mice there are many mice that don't think that's significant they just go oh there's some thunder somewhere carry on stealing cheese um, the man's not angry, um, and you and you you keep on in your inert state. It's a very very dangerous set uh, of consequences. So let's also check in with those indices just to have a quick look. So oil is both uh, the WTI while we add it. It's also bearish for commodities. We've had gold already coming off quite a lot, but it's also bearish for um, commodities. We've got WTI at ninety six. We've got UK oil at one hundred four. I'm not quite sure where they traded the day. They haven't overreacted yet. Remember, again, these things can subsequently respond. But I would say both oil and gold and silver have already sold off quite a bit recently. So there has been a little bit of the commodity downgrade, de, uh, de leverage element on it. Natural gas is still bouncing back super high. Uh, the poor Europeans are going to get spanked. You're going to go without energy in Europe. You know all those things you never thought would happen. Lights going out. Heater can't go on. It's coming for you. You think it won't happen. You haven't a plan. Your country and your and your local stealers and nursery extractors, your government and banking cartel have even been warning you so that they can establish alibi that it's going to happen. 
you're going to see things that you never thought would happen. So the Dow 30 is still up a little bit today. SPY um, is flat today on an indecision doji. So it might have traded a bit up and is now wandering. The equity VIX still staying low and drifting off. This is classic of not responding. NASDAQ, a little bit of an in-between day so far, but slightly off. So NASDAQ slightly off, SPY slightly off. The top 30, which is the Dow, it's a bit of a unique index, that one, um, is slightly up. So no great reactions yet from those in the uh, risk on environment. Not from Bitcoin either. And boy, let me warn, FX and bonds are moving hard. There's big readjustments taking place in the USD Japanese yen market. So let's have a look at some of your comments. Could a quick burst of higher rates be the trigger to stock downside? Well, we're talking about a quick burst of downside uh, rates now. We've already had a quick burst of rates. We went from 0.3 on the 10-year at peak uh, COVID all the way up to um, three and a half. So you've already had a 10x on rates. What's happening now is you, you've been bumping into the threes level, which I've shown before on charts, and you've been gestating. Now, how long do you get stuck in that zone and resist it? It looks like a little longer yet. So that cycle could see us pull back a little bit. Hello, Sniper, says Tomcat. Dixie just fell below support as well. So, yes, so the dollar for now is not, uh, the debt is getting bought, but the money is not going into the currency. Not, I'm a bit confused by that. So it can't be international money um, that's buying it. It must be inside the market, but they don't seem to be selling the equities yet. Bear in mind, people have been sitting on cash. There are highest levels inside America, highest levels of cash. So people are prepped for a puke. Um, and too much money has been sitting on the sidelines. So some of that might be going into the bonds market. Who else jumps ropes while watching Francis live stream? Says uh, Merlin Dodson. Your health is part of your wealth. He's kind of right about that. Uh, copper forming an HVF. So we'll have a look at that for you. Yeah, so Kaz and, CAD and Oz where we actually have functioning breakouts for the yen. So we haven't only been trading the yen. So inside the community yesterday, I shut all USD JPYs. I said, guys, this is turning into a type one. That was a big rejection. We had a very heavy news with Europe. This is likely to continue to the downside. We're not going to pop out top and do a melt up or a pop out the top and then a later reversal. We're going to go straight to the reversal. Um, and we closed our USD JPYs, that which we hadn't already closed on the wind up pattern. This is the value of having real method and submitting to process. And what are we seeing today? Back to that uh, USD JPY, the big mover is yen strength. And we've had two days back to back on this. And this is now the readjustment for the fact that, hold on, we may not get so high. So we're already at 136, having traded the high of, this is USD JPY, its highest point was 139.38. So it's a good rollover. We've got a funnel to run, which is our final little squeeze up. You're already well below the original target of the macro. So it shows by getting out on the original macro target, uh, a large percentage, you're, you're still better than where it is. What date was that? The, you smashed the 136 target, 21st of June. So essentially, we're more than a month. We're 22nd today. We're more than a month later, and you're getting out lower if you do that. That's the value of uh, of targets, guys. Um, let's have a look at some of those questions. So Oz and CAD uh, not doing so great at the moment on the commodity currencies. Let me just warn, however, macro-wise, I see problems for old Europe and the Asian-friendly currencies Korean one yen, Hong Kong dollar, uh, the Western uh, friendly, I meant not the Asian friendly, friendly to the West currencies. Uh, and the GBP, British guys, put your, hit us a like if you're in uh, Britain right now. Um, big issues also for the pound. I, it's possible actually, and this is, I'm adjusting a little bit because we've done quite a bit of analysis recently just on the pound against other crosses. It's possible the pound could overperform the, on the downside, the eurozone even as well. It's not yet a, a, a statement that I'm making, but the pound is in trouble. The pound is in real trouble too. Don't think it's, it, look, it was good to be at Brexit. 
rada, 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 all of that. But the pound is going to face some proper, proper hidings. And we're seeing commodity currencies against the pound in real structures for substantial moves. Uh, and we saw a triggering of the, the CAD against GBP. So overall, old Europe, big problems. And that also includes Polish, Lotti, the Danish krona, which is pegged to the euro, of course. Uh, the difference is your Scandies, the Norway, the NOC, the oil is taking you to the other side. Uh, the commodity currencies are going to fare better. Commodities are going to be the new game. But right now, we're going to go fear, and those commodities are going to sell off. Let's just update you on gold and silver. Something you should be absolutely dollar cost averaging at minimum, and probably also uh, regular lump sums on down sell days, which I think we may be having today. No, actually, it's up today. Gold's up. It touched at 1680 key level. That was, my friends, gold. That was the first three times it bumped into 1680, way back on the uh, crisis of the pandemic. The biggest spill being the pandemic itself. It snapped right the way back uh, and made uh, three, four touches on that level before melting up all the way up to its target. So gold was the long during the oil short, which was... The, our commodity neutral trade that we gave. Many people forget that we were very strongly long gold during that period, particularly against euro and pound, but also the dollar. So uh, gold is actually trading up at 728, 1681 for now is holding. It's not bad then. Uh, and silver, remember, 1871. Um, again, paper pricing being what paper pricing is for now. Also on its legacy level of 18, which was also the, the resistance point for silver. So 18 and 1680. And that gives you a gold-silver ratio of 92, a common ratio of 92. I think that will tap out, and I think we'll roll over at some point, uh, and metals will start to uh, look up. But we may have a bit of fear to encounter. So let's have a look at that uh, question that you're asking. Someone's looking at USD CAD and MEX, the navigators of reset times. Head and shoulders on USD GBP. That's the other way around. Um, so I'm not sure if you mean GBP USD or whether you intentionally turned it the other way around. Um, <clears throat> so currencies could have a little bit of unwinding of the dollar strength for a spell. Yeah, you could have an inverted head and shoulder on GBP USD. And it's also at a key level of 119. That was a key level. Why? We've got a line drawn there. Why have we got a line drawn there at 119? Because you've been bought up a couple of times there. 3rd of October 2016, that was the Shanghai Accord. Then again, March 2020, that was pandemic. You're at the same low levels. They don't want the dollar too much stronger. So it's 1.2. So dollar could be the one that is the weakest right now. GBP tenure reversed. Big shooting star went as high as 2.7, trading 1.9. So it's below the 2% level. Uh, so rates having on debt, having a little bit of a pullback, and it's causing ructions. It's causing ructions on the FX market. Understand FX markets and um, uh, debt markets work very much hand in hand. When you do corruptible things in the debt markets, you end up getting um, release valve being the FX markets. So that's what happened. As the Japanese were defending their debt, the USD JPY re-rated. Um, so it's one or the other. You know, uh, support bad debt uh, and keep it supposedly valuable by buying it up and putting a bid under the market. Okay, your currency gets destroyed. Uh, because every time you do things that are non non-price discovery that is an intervention to hold something up you are in actual fact proliferating your currency to make these mal investments aka bad investments so we're back on the funnel on our cad jpy uh draw uh for community members you'll know what that means and kind of expected that but i was happy to hold it it's in a validate we have stops or stand i filled up um, in and around the stop level and even a bit below. So I would still be square on breakout uh, run of the pattern. 
So good entries there, was executing well early, weighted on limits. So that was quite a success, but it is it has pulled back substantially on the profits it was giving us. Um, USDC and why somebody is asking about, which of course is China. And I would imagine also against the ruble, uh, we, the dollar is not at all doing that well. So 58, uh, it's around, it hasn't done too much against the ruble uh, recently, but it's a long way down from the 158 that it once hit about six or seven months ago before Putin uh, made it a commodity currency. So let's have a look at the USDC and why. Yeah, dollar down a teeny bit. Not, It's not huge. But it's been in a bit of a grind upside, a bit of a grindy upside. So there could be a bigger, there could be a bigger fall to come, kind of working its way up, a little bit of a caution. Good, good, good. Um, let's see what other questions you guys have for me. Uh, <clears throat> USD JPY may just have this pullback to certain levels. It's not necessarily going to go all the way back to 107. Uh, so some just to find some funnel levels, it might hold the funnel of that smaller HVF. It might churn. But for yields to reverse back to two after touching 3.5, that would be uh, a lot of scary stuff wanting to get back into. Gold 1200, silver 12 coming says uh beef testosterone um buying gold and oil yeah gold not going to 1200 says somebody else um when's the next reset haven't done reset in a while i will do um i've not got my bicycle to do my exercise and um yeah i have to a different set of circumstances and uh, there's quite a lot what that needs to say, but I need to get organized so that I'm not just waffling. Did you get out of your uh, shorts from Bitcoin? So crypto question. It's not a crypto channel. Thank you for the 261 likes. We appreciate it. Uh, it's, and there's 512 of you. So for those that just joined, the tenure has set up a reversal structure potentially. That doesn't mean it has to happen. That could take you just to to the two and possibly sub the two percent on the USD ten-year debt, having traded as high as um, three point five percent, so yields were driven up. Something may have happened that says you can't keep hiking. This is going to break. Something might be, uh, they might unpack the next monkey silverback virus. For all those that are participated in the corona, they get first uh, pick to re-participate in the same scam because they're obviously more susceptible and gullible. Now, who knows? It could be uh, it could be financial, could be derivative, could be banking, could be health, could be any number of uh, things. I mean, uh, there's some people that are watching the Hoover Dam uh, and the explosion there and pointing out uh, how many dark and interesting facts have come out of that uh, and what's been predicted there. Yeah, I mean, who's the world's oyster? False flag attack and blow up the Hoover Dam, who knows? I mean, we can get creative about this. I've no idea. Uh, you usually get your answer afterwards. What timeline should we expect for the commodities bull run? So um, <clears throat> well, uh, Graham is asking a question. Bonds up is supportive of the debt market staying intact. So could he be and he may, he may be right for a bit. It depends where the money's coming from. Um, if it's just inside the state's rotation because there was too many people sitting on cash and they decided to reinvest into the bond market, it might be confidence again in debt, in which case Dixie stays down because is isn't a purchase of dollars taking place. It's existing dollars already in America. So I don't know where the buying is coming in. We are seeing clearly money going back into Japan. But why is that pushing American debt? So if the if the yen is getting a bid, that's not uh, conducive to the American bond market being bought up. So I think the, there's rotation. Maybe there's some rotation into bonds and people have been holding high levels of cash. So that, be, that, that could be, as you say, confidence in the debt system still surviving. Um, and we'll hold it certainly short term, the buy bonds where diamonds brigade. Um, and you, if you don't see a firming in the dollar, then it's clearly inside dollars that are already in America because it's not inbound investment 
where people are selling a different currency to get uh, invested in the bond. So we're going to have to wait to see where's the drive coming. If it's internal and it's cash on the sidelines going into the bond market to get that higher yield, only now too much has chased in and the yield is now possibly going to drop, then it could be confidence um, in the debt system for a while longer. Uh, and it could also mean expectation of fear, which is why we haven't yet seen any selling going on in the equity market. So is there slack sitting in cash on the sidelines that has suddenly made this move? And if they've made the move in debts and they've resulted in the push down on yields, it has then the currency market just the dust adjusted. So is this a debt supportive move or is this a currency driven uh, set of events? So we're going to have to wait and see and watch uh, a, a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, monkey jabs for the people, says Tom Cat. Uh, power to the people. We're all primates. It's time we owned up to being primates and got a little bit of rhesus rage injected into us. How do you think the Chinese bank runs and real estate debt crisis will affect global macro? This is also an interesting question. Julian Blunt. Uh, could there be other forces where things have been allowed to go run? So we've seen quite a lot of off news coming out of China on bank runs. People may take the, the view, if you've got cash in banks, that it's actually better to have the government hold your cash, aka a bond. You're more likely to not get sheared than have a bank fail. So you could just see scared money, which is still a danger trade and a fear trade, wanting not to be in money markets, wanting not to be in um, bank accounts on call deposits, rather being in official uh, interest-bearing investments. It's possible on account of fear about the banks. So that's a fear call. So Julian's asking, could there be a, a knock-on effect with with the banks that are uh, fooling around in China, that some people feel that that could happen um, outside of China and start to see more of it maybe elsewhere. Bearing in mind that California and China are all the testing zones for extreme leftism, um, which is tending to Bolshevism, to out and out communistic Bolshevism in the one hand. So they're, they're just two axes of uh, freedom stripping communistic uh, supremacist doctrine that will see you own nothing and be pharmaceutically happy after you queue up for your new silverback jab. Could unwinding uh, there be trigger for the next big leg down? The game is trying to guess. The game is trying to guess. Lost that. It rolled up suddenly. Um, yes, Arrow from India. Good man. I'm glad to help you. Great point. Uh Yes, our live trading day is, again, on always our live trading day will take place on a, the data release of the unemployment employment numbers that are typically known as the non-farm payrolls. It is normally first Friday of a new month, normally. Um, I do not assess that it will be the 29th. Um, that is not a new month yet. Uh, but I stand possibly corrected. I'll just double check. So if you want to check in with us later when we've got a bit more data and uh, information about what's uh, going on, let's have a look. Um, just, just, uh, let's go straight to Friday the 29th. will almost certainly not be um, non-farm. It's likely to be the next day. So Friday the 29th, yeah, it's all the next week. So it'll be the the first, uh, what's that, Wednesday is the third, fourth is Thursday. So the fifth, fifth of August will be live with us, both crypto and uh, traditional markets for an hour and a half each. Um, so you can join us for that. So thank you for mentioning that. Okay, uh, thoughts on CAD JPY, pullback time, funnel, sit tight, Ricky Berwick. If you're in the community, you'll know what that means. Uh, we've shared draws. I decided to hold on. So, interesting, uh, Andrew Parker says that Greg Manorino said the Fed started buying debt again in line with the ECB. I've not heard of any official announcements with that. But maybe, unofficially, I've not heard them say, we're going to buy debt. I mean, they're supposed to be tightening. They're supposed to be taking money out of. 
doing quantitative tightening. That's the official story. Tightening on rates and tightening on liquidity, which is we are no longer buying, we are selling. Well, I don't think this, I think that's the worst, the hardest one for them to do. It's easier to push up rates than to actually take juice out of the system. The juice out of the system, money is like the blood inside a body. Um, systems need a function. Um, and taking blood out the body, you could try size down the body and put it on diet and let it eat a little bit less and can function and adjust according to that. But start sucking the blood out of the veins and people start to flake out on you and get a bit faint and wobbly. Um, and that, that's the problem with the tightening. So are they unofficially buying while claiming that they're tightening to push up the value of their debt and allow the rates to come back down? Possibly. In other words, there's no real crisis. They're just cheating and they're using uh, the money, which could be a, a dollar dilutionary, because if it's just America and the Fed doing it, it's not inbound money and dollars from elsewhere. It's new proliferation, dilute the dollar, push up the, push up the bonds, drop the yields, which is very much what Japan's doing. But that would be very contrary to what they've stated. So I would say that needs proving to me. I'm uh, no no chip. We've, we've interviewed Greg, good guy. Maybe he knows something I don't know. Uh, maybe he's seen some news I've yet to see. But it would be very contrary to what they have stated they are doing. So uh, just treat uh, as tentative and look to verify. Many banks reporting next week. Will this have an impact on markets? Uh, banks banks are very important parts of the the cartel of control. I don't think it's so much important about their profitability as to their sustainability, their liquidity and sustainability. Whether they're amazing stocks and are going to pump really well and have had an incredible profit season or they're not and they're battling and not really making too much money but getting by, that's going to be of moot interest. Their sustainability. And they've watered down these asset tests to meaningless little political charades. So I don't think the earning season is going to give too much unless somebody confesses to some outright sin um, and problem, which is unlikely to come out in a, as part of an earnings report. Just like Yuri Bezov, yes, go watch that series. He promised the Bolshevik communist. Silvercrest uh, and NFG, Newfoundland. Thanks for Truth Tellers, Francis. No problem. Silver fan, Martin McDade. Cheers, Francis. Appreciate the answers. Lane Bulger. Everyone should be familiar with the book Gulag Archipelago. Sounds interesting. Have a read. Can't say I've read it yet, but I have heard it before. Does the gold BTC head and shoulders trigger temporary risk on for markets? So let's have a look at that. It's an interesting share. So we haven't done uh, crypto comparables in a bit because we've been in a clear cut bear market until that pop out. Someone was asking about the flag. It's possibly more broadening. So the key thing is, could we go back risk on? Well, it's a concern for me if, if bonds are being bought. Generally, it's a fair trade. Remember, the whole principle of 60-40 portfolios was equity 60% goes up, bonds go sideways and a little bit off, bull market, da 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 da, da rate slowly climb, people getting too optimistic, bonds are going down in value, but you get a slightly higher coupon but your equities are pumping, then they go too far, too fast, rates get put up, um, you kill the stock market, then it, they crash, and suddenly rates get cut strongly, and bonds spike in value just as your equities are pulling down. So generally, the bond bid was your protection uh, when you had downturns in equity markets, generally. There, but there are some perversions to our particular system that could make the opposite true. So understand the general rule if, if these are happening. So we're at 2.8 on the 10-year. And the question was around Bitcoin divided by gold. So we'll do that as a quick check-in. And BTC divide uh, gold futures we'll do. Continuous front month. So most of these charts look very much like Bitcoin <laughs> because Bitcoin moved so 
and is so volatile, it doesn't change how it looks particularly. It still looks very much like Bitcoin. And it's traded a teeny bit up recently. It's been helped a little bit by uh, the fact that gold is traded down. Uh, but it's still too early to say. So it's still too early to say you want to be long Bitcoin. Until we see what's driving the bids for debt. Who's decided that the debt should be bought? My great view is it's not an investment asset at all at end of cycle and reset. It quite possibly could be set to zero and you could be given CBDC shit tokens at most in return or even lose it all. Um, so watch out. So what other questions do we have here? Jump in. Um, seems we've got some spammers. Uh, kill them. I guess you don't need coke when you are rich. Lol, nice energy, Mr. Sniper. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I am not a cocaine user, by the way, lest anyone think so. Um, but energy is great. You should try it. Health, vitality. Gold czar. Um, well, you can sync if you want to trade gold czar, you can trade gold dollar and dollars are then you can do two Z legs. It's a bit exotic for a broker to naturally offer it. I have some physical platinum, says uh, Jack's asking, um, but I'd still over buy a silver. We can't do a screen share, you have special tools for that. And I, I've made the investment in them. In fact, I have two. They're called pearls and they cost, the first one cost me about 14,000 pounds to land. Pearl twos. Uh, and I have a smaller one that is a travel version one, which is uh, somewhere else. So I have too many places in the country and I'm not in any one of them where our pearls are. So you will not see a screen. Uh, you will see a screen. You will not see a chart. Any concern about Panama and red? So, yeah. So for some other people, Panama, by the way, why you shouldn't worry about that. So you're going to see unrest about inflation. The peasants, and we're all peasants, by the way. So that's not a race or a, 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 that. The, the, the citizens are going to get unruly about the inflation, wherever you are. Don't forget, Panama has dollars. The only problem for them is when the Fed prints dollars and dishes it out, it doesn't give it to anyone in Panama. So the dilution goes to America's Bolsheviks, BLM, and everything else, transgender representation in corporations, quangos, and other things in America, and flipping some governments that America wants to control so that they can steal the gold and oil, uh, and other economic hitman-related military industrial complex, pharmaceutical complex supporting activities, for the greater control of the Zio uh, monsters. But uh, Panama don't get any of that. But they need to do stuff to earn dollars. Um, and so they have been getting the tightening, the rate increases that the Fed has put. They have to keep the same interest rates, but they don't get any of the proliferation. So what ends up happening is peasants get hungry and find food expensive and get pissed off. Um, and the borrowing... So last video on short BTC, that was wrong. Uh, yes. Uh, is it? A, well, let's be clarified. Is that, was it a bare flag? That's not correct. It's popped out the top of the flag. So that's incorrect. Uh, is this a rally that should still generally be cautionary sold? Well, we could go into a broadening structure. Reversals can be anything and they can take longer. And it's quite clear if this, if this bond strength is a fear driven event, which it's not proven yet. It might be, hey, the debt system's awesome. Let's all buy debt. Uh, I don't really believe that. We've never had that level of endorsement before. We've never needed it. Everybody's just believed in the debt system. So the fact that we're even asking the question would be a great development. But uh, generally running into bonds is, is a safety trade. You know, if you want to make money, you run into stocks. You go up, you get earnings. It goes up much more, much higher, much faster than bonds. Bonds 
bonds are safety. So if if the safety trade is getting chased, and we'll see it fall from 2.75, 2.5, 2.25, heading for two, expect these other markets to have reacted negatively because there's something that is causing the fear. And you don't think, oh, great, rates are coming down. ARK is going to go beautifully up again because it didn't like strong rates. No, there will be a driver for it. And that will generally be a fear. Yes, so uh, around about the 23 and a half, uh, it was clear the bear flag was broken. So Harsha is asking. So I closed, uh, I have closed shorts. I'm not short on crypto at all. I'm flat. Uh, I'm flat and I'm holding uh, stable. So I hold no cryptos and then Bitcoin can go rally to 25, 26. I'm a dispassionate observer and I'm waiting to see. So we've had three um, uh, three bear flags that traded to the downside and we had a fourth that may have been a bear flag and now could be some other bigger, larger, longer downside continuation pattern or a reversal pattern. And we'll wait and we'll see what that gives us. But what I'm talking about this topic now has direct bearing on Bitcoin. Because if everyone is doing the safety investment where they're going to be paid, if we're accurate about the reversal and it goes to 2%, by the way, we, we're not calling that. We're just saying there's a head and shoulders and it's triggered and the target is 2 um, I'm not saying that's a 90% likelihood or a 10% likelihood of occurring. I'm just saying I'm watching this. We're clearly no longer going up on the yield. That points to people are afraid about increasing rates. People are buying into bonds. That means they are running from somewhere else. Where are they running from? It's not clear yet. But going into bonds is a safety positioning, allegedly. As I say, at the end of reset cycle, many people that think that's safety will end up wearing a zero. In my opinion, the possibility of that is much higher than they are worth working on. So there's a difference between taking a technical short trade on the yield, which is long bonds to the 2% 2 from uh, the current levels of yields and getting out to actually going, yay, let me go buy bonds and that's going to be my long term hold of safety. So bonds could be ended up zeroized on a reset. When you have money that is too much money that's been borrowed into existence, you have too much debt. When you want to reset, the whole game is to cancel all the debt, which is awesome if you feel like you're indebted. It's not awesome if that debt is your asset. So that's what you have to bear in mind. Buying a bond means you've made a debt instrument your asset and any damage to it is your asset devaluation, including the possibility it could be go down to zero. What do you think about Jeff Snyder's Euro dollar university thesis that QE is not inflationary because the Federal Reserve does not create dollars, but an intrabank token called bank reserves. So I don't get overly technical with how the Fed, when they um, when they start, look, so let's talk about Japan, for example. They have to have created money to buy bonds. If they want to keep the bond at that value, they have to be the one paying something to buy it at that value. If no one else is prepared to buy it and it's going to sit at 0.25 yield, which is in an environment of inflation that is so high where Japan's oil prices will be going up, they've got to ship it in, their oil, their gold, their food, their everything that they have to import that is commodity, all going up in value. And you're going to say, this is a worthwhile asset at 0.2%. I'm going to say you're wrong. And whether you say, well, they've only created assets in a bank and actually the bank is being made by the bonds and the whole technicalities of the relay system is, if you are manipulating a market, somebody somewhere is paying to buy that asset at a, an inflated value so that its yield is only 0.245%. Otherwise, a seller will put buy my BOJ and no one will buy it and there'll be zero liquidity. So that's not a market. That's when it collapses. Then they say, okay, buy at this price, buy at that price. And they chase a, a stack that isn't there. So somebody has to be bidding. And normally it's primary dealers, banks, central banks, and people that are maintaining an artificial Ponzi nomics. So in the extremist of cases where you have Japan with 280% uh, debt to GDP, and you have debt super valuable, how can so much shit, there's more rubbish 
you're living in a rubbish dump and that just there's trucks bringing more of it every day, dumping it. How does that get to be valuable when there's a bottomless pit of supply? Well, because other people are manipulating the market and always saying they will buy it and in coercing existing holders not to sell it on any great volume. So pension funds and all of this. If you're a bunch of pension funds in Japan and all of them got together and said, this is a garbage asset, the inflation rate in Japan is going to be 7, 8, 9, 10%. Why am I guaranteed locking in that minus 0.25 as a, as a, a loss of buying power? Let's all sell. And they all sold. There'll be no buyers. And who will be the buyer? Bank of Japan. And they'll obviously turn on them and start beating up the banks and fining them and doing other things to coerce them. So it is a cartel of coercion that is maintaining a value on something that does not merit that value. And if you have a cartel of coercion, getting stuck on the minutia of how that money is getting in somewhere via who, whether it is officially delivering it, if people are holding a market up that should be allowed to fall, that is manipulation. And how it gets to be in that way, through some form of coercion, through some form of conspiring, through some form of cartel, you do not have a free market. You do not have a price discovery mechanism. There's no reason in a devaluing yen that has gone from 107 to 138, even if it pulls back to 125, which I don't foresee, you should be holding something that only pays you 0.25 with that level of currency devaluation. It is an absolute beating. And whatever inflation rate Japan has, which will be high because they will be experiencing all their agries, all their energies being shipped in, it's going to be punishing. There's no reason you should lock into an asset that's a guaranteed loss. You are literally at the fag end of a failing debt system where people are bluffing and pretending to maintain something that, that just cannot be maintained anymore. It's as simple as rationally that. So I've used Japan simply because it's the most extreme case in terms of this, but that is the most extreme version of Ponzi nomic support. But there are versions of that going on everywhere to varying degrees of perversion and debt long run just doesn't have the value it, it should have because people have printed too much money into existence. And when that money is proven to be wasted, uh, chased onto dumb projects, some of which I've given you examples of, what ends up happening is that money collapses and dies, that debt never gets paid and you get that contraction. And you don't want to be a holder of that as an asset when that happens. So Michael is saying, but the question is, where do the reserves go? Mostly they went to corporations for stock buybacks, but that is asset price inflation. So it's still inflation and a hyper asset price inflation. So let's just be also clear on the percentage but uh, uh, valuation to GDP. Uh, you've never been, you never went so high as you went at the peak, the absolute peak post-COVID of uh, market cap on equity to GDP. So much so that this current fall has only really brought you to the tips just below the tips of the dot-com hypervaluation. And they have manufactured these supply chain constraints to worsen the inflation. Everything that they've done with Russia, everything they've done is to hyper extend and put that pressure on inflation. Even more reason why they will not curtail this inflation. In fact, so here's what happens in a market. They're going to have a certain amount of price for energy for gas in Germany during winter. And come a certain amount is purchased at that price, it's no longer economically viable to supply it at that price. So they will cut you off rather than say, pay a higher price, because that's going to admit to the inflation. So they'll just not supply more than a certain allocation at that price. So shortages being cut off, insufficient quantity, price quantity, that's the supply and demand curves, price and quantity. When you have insufficient quantity at a given price, it's because it's non-viable and you have a black market that is selling at a true price discovery somewhere else. That's what happens when you introduce price control. So price controls lead to supply constraints. 
supply constraints are another mechanism of, of price controls because you cannot provide the quantity at that price. I'm not interested if, you know, if I'm selling donut for a dollar and they cost me a dollar to make and I'm obliged to be in the market as a market maker, I'm going to sell one donut and then I'm going to go do something else interesting the rest of the day. If you have a million people queue outside my donut all wanting to buy uh, a million donuts at one dollar and I'm not making any money, I'm not going to supply them. If I'm, a, if, you know, if I'm contractually obliged to do a bare minimum, I'll sell it a handful of donuts, but I'm not going to stay behind making it. It's an unproductive activity. So that energy is not priced correctly. What you want is full energy supply throughout winter for everyone, as much as they goddamn need and use. What's the price then for an unlimited quantity that a provider is happy to do? And that'll be a much higher price. So they do price controls. It's like going to the Soviet store. Well, we won't make the peasants won't have to pay more than X for bread. And you're in a queue, five hours long, you pay in time, and the first three people get to buy all the loaves of bread, and then the remaining 10,000 get nothing. It's another mechanism of disguising inflation. And you can say, well, the price was $1 a donut. Yeah, but three people got a donut at $1, and everyone else was sent home with nothing. It's got to be the price validated with volume that everybody will market reach a point of equilibrium. So this is uh, some of the discussion we're having. So shortages will lead to black markets. It's because of interventionism on price. Price should be much higher. And then you would have fully supplied quantity of market. And because intervening governments wish to mask the level of inflation because we are in all central banks, the game is inflation. Always. It's all they do inflate because they have a usury system that is lending so they have to inflate so the whole game is inflationary this whole notion is oh we're just like a little bit of inflation and all of that that's talking to their book they know they're going to inflate and we say well we'll always rein it back if it gets out of hand no why not have flat no inflation well if you have a usury system and you borrow money into existence and someone else has to pay interest you can't do that what if I just said 10 million tokens or 21 million tokens of Francis coin like Bitcoin? No inflation. That's it. Once they're all there and you all just buy up the, the Bitcoin, the Francis token. That's the whole thing. Then you'd have a real price discovery mechanism. There wouldn't be more tokens. People will have fractions of tokens, but there is no more. Germany is not superior and will not find a solution. Germany is a great nation of engineers, yes, but it's probably hyper-captured at the political level by socialists that are, in essence, Merkel herself was East German, Bolshevik World Economic Forum, bring in the communism, destroy the financial system, impoverish everybody, and then coerce them with the new surveillance digital system that's waiting in the wings. And Germany will be as affected as everyone else. And by the way, while they're taking your heat away from you, and keeping you cold, they're also going to say we've got to end livestock-based farming because this is planet emergency. You've seen it, CNN, and the whole Project Veritas is planet emergency. Now, people have had COVID fatigue. Everything must be planet emergency. How many red maps did you see of the extreme heat in Europe and the tarmac melting? What's wrong with the tarmac in Britain? That Dubai's runway doesn't melt at 47 degrees, but Britain's will at 37. Garbage, lies, uh, and it's all supply chain going to be squeezed, go hungry a little bit, black markets, they've split and deglobalized the supply chain. You're going to have to, if you want, you're going to have to bid more. And who will be running the black markets? Your local Israeli Zio of Powell. Pocketing extra normal money. Trudeau is just a man-child, weakling, world economic forum stooge. That's all he is. There's nothing clever about him. He's just sold his soul, um, just like all the others, just like the, the two that are going to become prime minister. There's absolutely no cause for optimism in Britain. You have a choice between world economic forum and world economic forum. Billionaire family that is part, deeply embedded in the world economic forum system, success, dodgy uh, business enterprises very much in the trend of 
uh, the whole surveillance, finance, pharmaceutical, everything. Um, or you get the woman equivalent, who was the big hawk doing defense that just once Russia destroyed. Bible, food, water, silver, God, lands, guns, tools, seeds, good neighbors. That's it. That's a nice formula. Bear dance, like it. Gas will be plentiful. Let's see. Let's see. And let's also see what you pay for it if it's plentiful. Let's see. Okay, guys. So has something broken? Why is the bond market going uh, up in value and the yields down? Suddenly, this reversal has taken place. We have a head and shoulders. Where is the money coming from? That is doing that. Did you see the big rising wedge reversal on the yen after a sustained period of squeezing higher, higher, higher? We call the top at 138.25. Final mini target on a much smaller fractal after a major macro one. This is what's happening. Has something broken? Will the headlines in a week or two explain to you why you were watching this YouTube today and why debt is going up? Where is the money coming from that is buying it? Is it private, institutional? Is it government, Fed, dark state? Or is it local rotation inside America? Is it international money going into American bonds out of debt in other current countries? But I'm seeing British debt going down. Let's have a look at Italian debt. This is the big problem. Italy for Europe is the big problem. Are they? Uh, oh, by the way, how funny is Agent Orange? Oh, we're going to contain inflation. We did a 50 basis points rise. You see, we're really serious. Oh, really? You're serious? And you're at 9 to 10% on your fake stats. And you did half a percent. I think that puts them at about half a percent now. Someone correct me because I don't know exactly where they negative 0.25 before or have they already done the one rate rise. I think this is the first. The Bank of Japan is the only one that hasn't raised rates. Yet the yen is firming now. And bonds are getting stronger. There's something happened. You will have the answer. I don't have it. I don't know where the money's coming. But it isn't necessarily good for risk on. Generally, that would be my position. It isn't necessarily good for risk on. Italian yields at 3.4. They hit 4.2. I wouldn't say uh, I would call any reversals there. But it, it did sell off from its high. So the petrol. Let's finish on this. This explanation. Agent Orange, toxic, manipulative, and dishonest. Through and through, lawyer, you know that they are, they speak with forked tongues at best of times. Um, and when you have a fraudulent lawyer that's in uh, pushing the World Economic Forum agenda, then you know you're going to get just nothing but horseshit and toxicity. So what has she done? She is tightening rates. We're going to put the inflation fire out, water on the fire, one end. But, 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 quantitative easing for... Italian bond market, nobody wants to hold the Italian version in case Germany steps away and says we'll stand behind our debt, but we can't afford this European experiment anymore. Everyone to themselves. Suddenly you're sitting with an isolated, hyper-indebted nation that is not earning enough globally uh, at a macro level. It's actually been a very bad experiment for Italy, the euro, um, and they're the poor sister of the big three of Germany, France, and Italy. Um, <clears throat> Suddenly, we're going to buy their bonds. So hold on. You're going to print euros and proliferate more euros to buy and support the Italian debt market and keep yields down. Manipulation, non-free market. The more times you hear manipulation and non-free markets. By the way, they're putting, they're putting in court people that were manipulating gold and silver and spoofing. And here you have government. When government does it, it's quantitative easing or it's uh, transfer mechanism tools. Tools. I love tools. I have a little tool, a tiny little tool. They have lots of tools, only that all comes down to one tool. And they can do buying on the one end. So that's actually proliferating, killing the euro, borrowing into existence more money to buy a specific nation state's debt because theirs is particularly under-supported, which is quantitative easing and putting out the fire with rate tightening on the other side. Now, I predicted this day would come that you would have water and fire way back in the first euro crisis. And here you actually have someone putting it forward that they are dealing with inflation and, and what she's actually doing is 
tickling over there and slapping over there. Uh, she's pouring petrol on one side of the fire and water on the other. Good luck with that. So the tightening rates, a uh -uh, little bit of a tighten there. They won't go far at all. They'll continue to disappoint the Eurozone too leveraged, too soft, too weak, uh, but quantitative easing, creating Euros to buy up the Italian debt market. And once you start to own lots of worthless Italian debt, what do you do with it? Who's going to buy it from you? You are the toxic bank. You are the dumb uh, Agent Orange in the room. You are the person holding up things that should be let to fail. This is all about a synchronized all fall down that is reset and debt will be at the center of it and you should never own it as an asset class and you should stay away from the people that say buy debt own diamonds. Take a trade. Maybe if you want to. I'm not going to because it should go boom halfway on the way to your target. Be my guest. Never invest in assets. And if you have a pension, your pension fund managers have probably invested you in it without you even knowing. Okay, guys, good to check in with you. Go to themarketcypher.com to book a call. Uh, we'll be updating as these crazy things happen. You've also been told about the uh, non-farm, the live trading day on your next non-farm date, which is going to be in August, early August, first week of August. I think it was the third that I say. Um, we're really grateful to have you. Watch the debt markets. Watch the oil markets. Watch the euro usd the usd jpy so look at the dollar you can catch that through the dixie if you want to be lazy but also watch it versus the euro also watch it versus the uh yen and uh swiss franc uh euro still a great trade all the trades we've given you all still great trades have a great friday have a great weekend thank you for being followers thank you for liking we truly appreciate it uh, we aim to give you uh, cutting news as we see big things happen. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. And I will do a crypto update where I'll deal more specifically with what I've just touched on at the moment. But not buying on to risk on, especially in an environment where bonds are getting the bid. Okay. It could be fear. It could be fear. Yeah. Bye for now.